on to the mat next match, and this will feature third seeded Dominique Genet of France taking on the sixth seed, Julio Ricardo Fierro of Mexico. Genet on the left on target number one, and Fierro on the right on target number two. So a very good match between the Frenchman and the young man from Mexico as you look at Gail Prevost, also of France, a teammate who will be in competition tomorrow in the recurve competition. But here's a good look at Dominique Genet, who's ranked number four in the world, 43 years old, won three medals in Shanghai to start the season, a mixed team gold, a team silver, and an individual bronze medal in China. Then he picked up a bronze medal at stage two in Antalya. As for Julio Ricardo Fierro, he is seventh in the world, just 22 years old. Began competing on the international stage in 2009. He was telling me just yesterday that he's really proud of this, that he's only the third Latin American compound man to make it to the World Cup final, and he was, he was really proud to be here. This spring, he started off the season strong. He reached the gold medal match in Shanghai, but he had to face Rio Wild in that match. And Rio, who, of course, has been on a roll, and we'll talk about that more. We will. As the day progresses, but uh, good experience for Julio Ricardo Fierro in Shanghai earlier this year, and we'll see if that stands him in good stead against Dominique Genet of France. As the sun comes out here in Tokyo, and a nine for Genet. Mm, appears Mexico. to be a 10. Mexico have had a fantastic uh, Olympic yeah. Games, and uh, he was saying that it, it, there's so much more press attention now on no, archery no, in, in no, Mexico, no. so he also wanted to try and uh, capitalize on that interest because a good result here would uh, definitely be picked up by his uh, press back home. Of course, we'll see Alejandra Valencia tomorrow in the recurve mm. as she is filling in at the last minute. And we'll be talking about that at length as well throughout the course of this weekend. So there's a 10 for Dominique Genet. 29, or excuse me, 28 out of a possible 30 points. And Julio Ricardo with his final shot of the first end, and it's a 10. So two 10s in that first end gives him a one-point lead. So Fierro, who was ranked 21st in the world last summer, now 7th in the world. He's on his way up, 22 years old, as we mentioned. Began on the international stage back in 2009. Won a gold medal the next year with the Mexican mixed team at the World Cup stop in Antalya. Then won a gold medal on his own at the 2010 Pan Am Championships. Then indoors, he lost his semifinal match to Rio Wild in Las Vegas last February. But again, it's all about getting that experience and having that competition against top flight, top yes, flight competitors. Yes, it is. And we find that with all our development archers. You can't just, if you just spend your whole time training them and you take them to the World Championships, it's all just too much. You need to start off with smaller events. And even if you, even if you go in there and you're possibly gonna, gonna lose because you're you're not, your ability's not quite there yet, to get used to the surroundings, get used to how everything works. Then when your ability does raise up, it's priceless. You already feel happy. You need to feel at home standing out there on the line. Mm -hmm. Even though he did lose to Rio Wild in Shanghai at stage one this year, along the way there in qualifications, he had to knock off Paul Titcher and Pierre-Julien Deloche. And so that's great experience in and of itself. That's, uh, that's no, bad, no bad experience well, at all. Two great archers that he was able to defeat at that competition. Good Dead center for the young man from Mexico. Good Same can be said for Genet. Yeah, this is the type of form I expected. So as the sun comes out, the action heats up here in Tokyo. Hibiya Park in the heart of Tokyo. Just drop that one a little bit. That could be costly again. 
dernière, elle est là-dessus en dessous. All right. So three straight tens in this end, and that's four straight tens overall. In fact, of the six shots that Fierro has taken, only one has been outside the center ring, which accounts for his lead at this point in the match. That's why he's here. No one's here on luck. So 57 out of a possible 60 points for Dominique Genet. His countrymen, Pierre Julien Deloche, waiting in the wings, getting ready to compete in the next match against Peter Elzinga of the Netherlands. If this happened to have been a more of a windy shoot, more of a more of a competition where the elements were playing a part, having a teammate go out first sometimes can be priceless. You know, if you work together as a team, he can then come off and say, "Look, my first arrow went." I aimed it and it went dramatically right and you can give tips today because because the weather is so near to perfect I, I don't think that's going to give them much of an advantage but it's always good it's always good to have someone go out and uh, give you any relevant feedback even just small pointers about oh that you need to wear a cap because there's some sun glinting off the side of that building any information sometimes can get you that extra point and as we know that extra point can give you the match and Dominique Genet needs all the points he can get right now as he starts off this third end, trailing by two, fires a 10. So Julio Ricardo Fierro on fire right now. Six consecutive 10s for the young man, 22 years old, from Mexico. And that will not help Dominique Genet's chances at all. At eight. No. He doesn't look comfortable at all. Not when the man he's matched up again is shooting nothing but ten. Yeah, he looks pretty comfortable, I think. He is dialed in. And he has a four-point lead right now. Genet has got an interesting stabilizer setup. He's got one of his side rods, which typically sweep back towards the archer, maybe in a downward, downward angle. He's got one pointing forward, which is, I spoke to him about it, and he just said it's, it works best for him. He's tested it and gives him the most points. So you can't argue with that, but it is uh, a little bit strange. That is a fantastic 10, 10, 10. Great grouping by Julio Ricardo Fierro. He's on fuego right now. He is on fire. Right now, Julio Ricardo Fierro has taken nine shots. Eight of them have been tens. So despite the fact that Dominique Genet has shot respectably and has 85 points, he finds himself in an unenviable situation right now. Trailing by four points, 89 to 85. But we still have six arrows, two ends left to go. The biggest thing Genet will know is that it doesn't necessarily come down his performance. He can put the next six arrows on the X, but if his teammate holds it, if his uh, opponent holds it together, that's, that's not enough. Him to shoot well, he has to rely on the fact that his opponent's going to give him a chance and drop some points. And that's not always the case. Yeah, you hate to put your fate in somebody else's hands, don't you? Yeah, it is out of his control. But we'll be say. that as it may, that's the situation Dominique Genet faces right now. And he bravely comes up with a 10. His flags on the target are hardly... It is raining 10s right now for Julio Ricardo. It may look like a sunny day. And a nine for Dominique Genet. I think it's only raining tens on target two. <laughs> target Sc scattered showers. Scattered showers, yeah. Focused around the middle of target two. Ooh. Ooh. The first errant shot of the day. For Fierro. And that's a big one to go from a 10 to straight out to an 8. That's uh, And the shot looked okay. He didn't look dis dissatisfied when it went off, but, but still, Genet is not necessarily going to capitalize on that uh, slip up. 
Close, but not quite close enough. Just outside the 10 ring, not on the line, so it's a nine. And Fierro with a 10 here. Instead shoots another eight. He overcorrected. Wow. So back-to-back -back eights. Explain that to me, Michael. Uh, a, a man can shoot his first nine shots. Eight of them are tens. Actually, his first ten shots, nine of them were tens, and then he shoots back-to-back -back eights. What happens? Where does the magic go? I'll tell you, it's that little thing you may have heard of called pressure. Ah. And sometimes... You start uh, to think a little too much, huh? Yeah, sometimes it, you, you see it with competitions all the time. You just get such a row of tens, the pressure adds, the pressure adds, the pressure adds, and then all of a sudden the valve goes and the pressure comes out. And uh, it's... Uh, yeah, he's... They didn't look terrible shots, but maybe he's just starting to get a little bit shaky. Maybe you're taking a little bit too long, so you start to get short of breath on the shot. Maybe your hand's getting a little bit sweaty, so now you're not quite so comfortable putting your hand in the bow grip. There's, there's a lot of factors. And, uh, and there, by the way, in the front row, two of the recurve archers from Mexico, Luis Alvarez on the right and Alejandro Valencia on the left. And there you see it. It's a two-point advantage, 115 to 113. Julio Ricardo had as much as a four-point lead, but those two eights shot back-to-back -back at the end of the fourth end have made this a he's, little more interesting. He's lucky he's in a match where two eights and he's still got a lead because in most matches you shoot a pair of eights. But maybe Genet's joining him in the eight ring, which is... Well, if Genet was going to mount a comeback... Yeah, that should have been it. That was not the idea. And the 10 right there may have done it right there. After that eight, a 10 by Fierro, who regroups and goes back up by four. What a big swing that was there on the first arrow of the fifth and final end. Four points feels a lot more comfortable than two. I can tell you that from an athlete's point of view. Oh, he's got a cushion to play with right now, and he knows that, and hopefully that calms him down a little bit. Excellent. I would say he's calm. Yeah, he's looking calm and focused. Calm, cool, collected. Julio Ricardo Fierro. Who is one shot away from going on to the semifinals despite that 10 oh, by Genet. Dominique Genet. Finishes in a 10. Finishing with two 10s, in fact, that'll uh, make you feel a little bit better about his performance, but he knows he, he can do more. And the nine will not hurt. Julio Ricardo Fierro, who had a cushion to play with, and he ends up winning by three points, 144 to 141. And it was that string of tens through the first, oh, I'd say uh, three ends that really made the difference. He went up 29-28, Fierro did, after the first end, led by two after the second end, four after the third end, fired two back-to-back -back eights in the fourth end that narrowed the gap to two points, but he holds on and wins by three, 144 to 141. So Dominique Genet's work is done here in Tokyo. Sadly, yes. It's a long way from France to Tokyo City, but uh, that's what top sport is about. You come all this way, you do a match, and if it doesn't go your way, you're, uh, you're done. So there you see the final scores here in this second quarterfinal match in the men's compound competition at the Archery World Cup Finals in Tokyo.